Children who live there have no mothers or fathers, but two kindly women look after them. Their names are Miss Pony and Sister Marie. Now children, all take your seats at the table. It's dinner time. Oh goody! Oh goody, I'm hungry! What for dinner? I'm starved. Tom, Tom, please take your seat. Why are you standing at the window? This is not the time to look at the snow falling. Your dinner is getting cold. Baby, baby. Did you hear that, Sister Marie? It, it sounds like a baby crying. So that is what you are trying to tell us, Tom. I'm going outside. Watch your step, Miss Pony. Sister Marie, come quickly. There is a baby out here. Oh dear, how could anyone leave a baby out in the snow? Look, there's a note pinned to the baby's blanket. It says, I have no money and I can't feed her any longer. I hope you will take good care of her. Her name is Annie. Annie is such a nice name. Oh, look, Sister Marie, she's fast asleep. If she is asleep, there must be... There is. It's another baby. Is there a note? No, but the baby is holding a doll. The tag on its dress says, it's a candy doll. Then I think we'll call the baby Candy. And because it's snowing, she'll be Candy White. Little Candy, Little Annie. Aren't they pretty? They're so cute. Six years pass by very quickly, and soon Candy, Annie, and Tom weren't little babies anymore. This is fun making snowmen, isn't it, Candy? It would be, Annie, if I could get my snowman to look as good as yours. I think they both look super. They're the best snowmen in the whole wide world. Oh! You've ruined our snowmen. You apologize to Annie right now. Candy, it's okay. It might be okay with Annie, but it's not with me. Apologize, Tom. I guess I'm sorry. Boys are no fun. Especially you, Tom. Springtime in the forest, hills, the meadows. It's springtime for the children, squirrels, the ducks, and everything else. Candy, look at these cute little 
little ducklings. They're walking along, following their mama. I hope the little ones don't get lost. I know what. I'll tie some string to each of their feet, then tie it around the mother duck. And that way she won't lose them. There. Another good deed. I think you're going to be in big trouble when Sister Marie sees what you've done. Now what are you up to, Candy? I have to climb this tree and put this little bird back in his nest. He fell. Candy, Candy, get down from there immediately. But sister, I just want to put this little bird. You get down this very instant. Oh, be careful. The branch is breaking. Help! Look out below. Oh, Candy, are you all right? Well, I don't feel too good. But at least the little bird is back safe in his nest. Don't you feel sorry for the poor little ducks? But I only tied them together because I did feel sorry for them. I was worried for them because I thought they might all lose their mommy. They don't have anybody kind like you and Sister Marie to take care of them if that happens. That's why I did it, Miss Pony. You may go now, Candy. Miss Pony, you shouldn't let her off so easily. Look here, Sister Marie. I don't have the heart to scold her. Do you? Take a look out there, Sister Marie. Oh, Candy. Annie. I was so scared. When you get scolded, I feel just like I am being scolded. Oh, Annie, I promise I'll be more careful next time. I don't want you to worry about me all the time just because I do something bad. That's much better than us scolding her. Don't you think so? Oh, dear. Is something bothering you, Miss Pony? Well, Mr. Me, I was just thinking about the day when they'll have to say goodbye to each other. Someday they will have to separate and be adopted into different homes. But that's still a long way off, isn't it? No, it might be the third Sunday of next month. Oh? On the third Sunday of every month, the children of Pony's home are on their best behavior. That's the day when people, looking for some child to adopt, look at all the children. And all the children dream of being chosen to live with gentle people who will love them. All the children, that is, except Candy and Annie. Let me explain it to you. If we could take every word we'd ever said that hurt someone else and we made a new start, we could make each word kind, leave behind all the cruel ones, and we'd never have to mend a broken have come and gone. Today is Candy and Annie's 10th birthday. How, how, how could 
come Candy and Annie's birthday are on the same day. Well, Tom, that's because... Because Annie and I were found on the same day. Nobody knows our real birthday, so we picked that day to have a party. I wish I was found on the same day, too. Candy, I bet you will get a lot of presents from your mom and dad when you get adopted. Annie and I are going to stay right here until we are old ladies. Right, Annie? Right, Candy. You can't be sure of that, can you, Tom? I guess not, Miss Pony. Do you mean that Tom is leaving? Yes, Candy. Our Tom is going to be the son of a very rich farmer after the snow melts away. Do you mean that Tom is going to get a new mommy and daddy? Yes, and they're two very nice people. They sure must be strange people to want someone like him. You're just jealous. Nobody in the world would ever adopt a tomboy like you. Oh, oh Tom, I hate you. Take that. I'm going to hurt you. There. Why don't you hit back? Well, boys aren't supposed to hurt girls, right? Hey, Candy. I wonder what Tom's new father's going to be like. I bet he's really stupid. He'd have to be stupid to want someone dumb like Tom. Oh, Candy, how could you say such a thing? I think we should both be very happy for him. I don't see why anyone would be happy just because they got adopted. I like it here at Pony House. I want to be with you, Annie. Oh, Candy, I want to be with you, too. <laughs> Strange. Candy hardly ever cries. I think she's really very sad that Tom is leaving. The snow melted, and the day finally came for Tom to go away. Hey, everyone. I want you to meet my new dad. See how big and strong he is? I'm going to be big too. Miss Pony, Sister Marie, thank you for being so good to me. I'll make you both proud of me. It's time to go. Say goodbye to everybody, Tom. Okay, Mr. Steve. Goodbye, everyone. I told you to call me Dad. And is that all you got to say after they took care of you for 10 years? You really are a dumb kid. I'm gonna whack you. You stop that! Don't you dare hit Tom! Stay out of this, little girl. This is between father and son. Well, I just meant, sir, that Tom will learn a whole lot quicker without you hitting him. Hmm? Well, you just may be right. I'm sorry, Tom. Let's get going. Climb aboard my buggy. Goodbye, kids. I've never told you girls this before, but you know it was Tom who heard you crying in the snow. He made us go and find you. It was Tom that found us? Oh, Annie, quick! The shortcut! I have to tell Tom something! <sighs> Hurry, Annie! Look, there they are! Tom! Tom! Goodbye! And if he hits you, you hit him right back! Goodbye, Ken. After the mischievous Tom was adopted by the Texas rancher, Pony's home suddenly became very lonely. Annie? Annie, are you up yet? Yeah, I'm up. I haven't slept at all, and it's morning already. Annie, what's the matter? Do you have a fever? It's nothing. But you don't sound very happy. How wonderful to have a father and a mother. I know. 
You're heartsick, aren't you, Annie? Just a little lonely, that's all. If that's the problem, just leave it to me. What are you going to do? We're going to cure your heartache. Now get dressed. But it's so early. What's up? You'll see. Good morning, Miss Pony. Sister Marie, good morning to you. My, what a lovely day. What's that you have in your hand? It's a note I found on the kitchen table. Oh, what does it say, Miss Pony? It says, Good morning, Miss Pony and Sister Marie. Annie and I, in order to cure our heartache, have decided to take a trip. Heartache? Continue reading, please. Both Annie and I have not been feeling too well recently, so we thought that we would suddenly do something grand. I just wonder what Candy's idea of something grand is. Let me read the rest of the note. We have no definite plans, but we will return before dark, so please don't worry. For lunch, we have bread and cheese, and since this is a special trip, we have helped ourselves to the cider that Miss Pony sips at bedtime. <clears throat> Just a little sip, Sister Marie. It helps me sleep, you know. John, don't worry. Candy will be home soon. Sister Marie is right. Now, aren't Sam and Millie waiting for you in back? You're going to make a birdhouse together, aren't you? Uh-huh. Then you better go. Run along now. Hurry up, John. Let's build the birdhouse. Oh, but do you realize that during the ten years since Candy and Annie came here, not once did we take them on a picnic. Yes, you're absolutely right. Sister Marie, let's leave them be. Surely it will be a memorable experience for them both. Hmm. Now, bottoms up. Won't we get drunk? No way. Miss Pony drinks this every night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a good feeling. I'm going with you. Don't let go of that rope, girls. Help! Help! Hang on, just another minute. Oh, oh we're saved. Thank you. Oh, thank you're okay you. now, girls. Don't worry. Everything's fine. Oh, wow. That was a close one. Yes, indeed. You girls are lucky Mr. Brighton and I were down here fishing. You girls could use some dry clothes and some hot food. My cabin is right around the bend there. You just come along with us. We'll see that you're taken care of. That's awfully nice of you, Mr. Brighton. Mr. Brighton is always willing to help out when he can. Oh, is that your cabin? Wow, that's beautiful. 
and what a delicious odor. Candy. I'm sorry that all there is in girls' clothing is riding habits, but at least you'll be dry. Wow, are we eating out in the yard? Is it so unusual for you? For the first time in our lives, right, Annie? <laughs> oh, yes. At Pony's home, if we ate outside, the sisters would say we were being bad-mannered. May I begin eating? Go right ahead. Mm, this is good. Candy, your manners are horrible. <laughs> The less you worry about manners, the tastier the barbecue is. <laughs> <laughs> that really tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, what is Pony's Home? Oh, don't you know? You see, we very seldom come to this cabin, so we've, we've never heard of Pony's Home. It's a place for children without any father or mother. Oh, that's sad. But we don't look sad, do we? You sure don't. Both Annie and I have the same birthday. Know why? Well, you sure don't look like twins. When we were babies, we were found on the same day. That's why. Candy. Uh, more lemonade, Kirk. Yes, sir. Say, could we have some, too? Oh, Candy. Why not? I'm full of food already. Here, girls. Please drink all you want. How would you both like to try some horseback riding? On a horse? That's right. I'll teach you how to ride in no time. Wow, sounds like fun. But I'm scared. Oh. No worry. Our horses are very gentle. Here, now you sit up here. Wow, suddenly I feel like a great person. Now, here, you get on, Annie. There, there, that's fine. Giddy up! Yes! It's walking! It's walking! <laughs> Naturally, horses walk too. He runs, he walks, does everything but talk to you. And he's a whole lot brighter than he seems. He goes, he stops, does all the things. A car can do, but never uses any gasoline. A horse, of course, can take you in the wilderness. Just ask the Northwest Mounted Police. The only thing you've got to do to make him move is hold the rein, say giddy up. Then squeeze him with your knees. Candy! Go! There you go, girls. Have a nice ride. You know, sir, this is the first time in a long time that this captain's so merry, isn't it?
the river bank, but he wasn't there. Where on earth could he have gone to? Who's that coming over there behind those trees? Oh, I do hope it's John. Candy! My, how you look! Candy, did you meet up with John? He disappeared after eating lunch. He must have gone looking for you and Annie. John? Looking for us? Candy, where are you going? Candy. Candy? Shh. Everyone be quiet. Look, he's up in the tree sleeping. John, you were looking for me? Gosh. John? John? Wake up, John. Candy? What do you mean, John, making me worry so? Now climb down from there right now. Yes, John, climb down. But please be careful. And hurry it up, too, because it looks like we've got visitors. Visitors? That's right, Candy. Look, there's a carriage coming. A carriage? Oh, that looks like Mr. Brighton's. What in the world is going on? Annie! Annie, you've come home! Good afternoon, ladies. Oh, it's you, Kerr. Young Miss, Mr. Brighton was quite worried about you. I'm really sorry. And Annie? Well, tonight she's going to stay at the cabin. We didn't want all of you to worry, so I came to inform you myself. Then Annie isn't coming home. Miss Pony, why not call on Mr. Brighton bright and early tomorrow? Yes, indeed. It would be nice if he was taken with Annie. She'll make a wonderful daughter. Sister Marie and Miss Pony, I hate you, and I hate Annie! Why, Candy, what in the world is the matter? Late that night, well after midnight, Candy was feeling very lonely and finding it very hard to sleep. This was the first time ever that the two girls were spending the night away from each other. Annie, you may never come back anymore. And then, and then we'll never be together again. Oh, I wish I hadn't made you go on that picnic yesterday. Then you'd still be here. Annie. Who's that? Candy? Annie, is that you? Annie, it's really you, Annie! Candy, I wanted to come back. I couldn't stand it. We've always been together. Oh, Annie, it's really you! I was thinking about you, Candy. Next thing I knew, I was heading for Pony's home. I walked the whole way. I kept thinking about you too, Annie! Candy, about Mr. Brighton, I wanted to be his daughter. You told him? Uh-uh. Really? Oh, I'm so happy! Look here, I brought you something from Mr. Brighton's cabin. What's this? Sweet dates. One of your favorite foods. Oh, Annie, thank you. Annie, we're the closest friends in all the world. We'll never again be apart, will we? Never again, Candy. <laughs> <laughs> Candy, candy, makes you think you're seeing 